So let's talk about electromagnetic waves. Well, what is an electromagnetic wave? Well, it's a wave that takes place in the electromagnetic field. Now, this was something that actually followed from an addition to electricity and magnetism that was first discovered by James Clerk Maxwell in 1864. So let's go through how this works. When we look at electromagnetic fields in a vacuum, we find that because of the Kirchhoff-Faraday lens law, if I change a magnetic flux, I will generate an electric field. So if the magnetic flux is changing like this, then the electric field will circulate around that changing magnetic flux. Now, what Ampere did, or sorry, what Maxwell did was he modified Ampere's law and said that a changing electric flux will generate a magnetic field. So what this does, well, first off, it changes the name of Ampere's law to the Ampere-Maxwell law. And together with that, all four of the previous laws were brought together and are all referred to as Maxwell's laws. So James Clerk got a lot out of that discovery. But anyway, what it also does is it says that when you change a magnetic field, you generate an electric field. You change an electric field, you generate a magnetic field. So what that does is it says that anytime you've got an alternating magnetic or electric field, you'll generate the other one. And then that thing that you just generated will generate the other guy again. And so it just kind of propagates away from there in the form of a wave, an electromagnetic wave. Now, the beautiful thing about this is that this was taking place in vacuum. So in vacuum with no medium there, we can still have an electromagnetic wave. And in fact, we will always have an electromagnetic wave. We can't avoid it if we start off with an alternating electric or magnetic field. We can do that just by having positive and negative charges switch places back and forth. That's going to generate a changing electric field that continues to change. It doesn't just change once. It continues to change over and over and over again, and that will generate a changing magnetic field, which generates a changing electric field, so on and so forth, giving us this nice electromagnetic wave. All right, the speed of the wave can be determined from the standard constants in electricity and magnetism. The speed is given by the square root of one over mu zero times epsilon zero. Mu zero is the permeability of free space and is associated with magnetic fields, whereas epsilon zero is the permittivity of free space and is associated with electric fields. So we can see them both together generating the speed of electromagnetic waves. Numerically, this turns out to be three times 10 to the eighth meters per second, or about 300 million meters per second, 300,000 kilometers per second, or 186,000 miles per second. Put in another uh, way, it's about seven and, a or seven and a half times around the equator of the Earth in one second. So no wonder people weren't able to measure how fast that was in the 1500s. The first actual measurement didn't happen until the 1800s. All right. So let's see what makes electromagnetic waves different from mechanical waves. The big thing is that you've got propagation in vacuum. Remember that mechanical waves require a medium. They represent a disturbance in a medium like water or air or rock or something like that. In vacuum, you can't, what are you disturbing? Electromagnetic waves have an answer. We're disturbing the electromagnetic field. We don't need a medium for that. We can do that in vacuum because electric and magnetic fields exist in vacuum. Now, what people used to say is that, oh, there's a medium, we just can't see it. The problem is that the way that speeds work with mechanical waves, this ether that was proposed to carry electromagnetic waves or light would need to be both very, very, very light and very, very, very rigid to support such a high wave speed. So 
To put it in another perspective, sound waves propagate through aluminum at about 5,100 meters per second. So we're going to need a material that's so much lighter than aluminum and yet so much more rigid that it supports speeds not 5,100 meters per second, 300 million meters per second. And that's just unrealistic. And furthermore, all of the times that we have tried desperately to observe this ether, we haven't seen anything. And so what that leads us to believe is that this really is a disturbance in the electromagnetic waves or electromagnetic fields and not a mechanical wave at all. All right, some basic properties of um, electromagnetic waves. When you have a plane wave, and that means that it's just coming like this, not like a, a light source that goes out all like that, but just kind of plane wave like that, always associated with an electric field and a magnetic field that are perpendicular to each other. So if the electric field's going back and forth like this, the magnetic field will go back and forth like this. All right? The direction of propagation of the wave is always given by E cross B. So it's perpendicular both to the electric field and to the magnetic field. In that previous example, the electric field was like that, magnetic field is like that, the wave will be going that direction, perpendicular to both the electric and the magnetic fields. All right, as with all waves, the wavelength times the frequency equals the speed. In this case, the speed is really, really, really big. Now, most of the time when we're looking at mechanical waves, the frequencies can't get too big because it's associated with the medium having to respond to being disturbed. And that takes a little bit of time. But with electromagnetic waves, this is just associated with disturbances in the electric and magnetic fields, which are not media. So that means that the frequency can be very high. It's limited only by how quickly we can move charges back and forth. So there are electromagnetic waves that are known with frequencies up to like 10 to the 22, 10 to the 24 oscillations per second, which is way higher than any physical medium could sustain. So anyway, that's electromagnetic waves. And by two, I can't do this with you two laughing back there. So if we had, no, that's not right, three coplanar points. So have you ever gotten off an airplane? <laughs> That should be... Less than. Yeah. Dang. Is it like 500 degrees in here or what? All right, so when you're in chemistry class, you're gonna be doing a lot of work. You're gonna be starting over. So as an example, we could consider like you've got a chain hanging from two, um, two fix. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>